Would you come with me to France? We could dance on the Champs-Élysées. Let's take a chance on a more. Good day, and welcome to Notes and Notions from the Writing Desk. I'm your host, Joanne D. Simone, and I want to thank LTV East Hampton for this opportunity and for continuing the work of public access, a true essential to us all. We must keep it going. Um, today, my guests are Alan O'Reilly, Teresa DeBerry, and Rachel Feldman. They are going to be reading scenes from my play, Norma Jean Enlightened. We're doing things a little differently today to uh, to cooperate with uh, the COVID-19. So I'm going to introduce the play, then I'm gonna turn the stage over to the three wonderful actors. So I am, I will, I will now introduce, uh, I will now introduce the play. Upon her death, Marilyn Monroe finds herself on a beach with a mysterious ethereal woman she li who lives in a tree, the former renowned Italian actress, Eleonora Duza, now known as Chaperone in the afterlife. Chaperone helps Norma Jean slash Marilyn reconcile some of her time on earth through encounters with key people in her life. Norma Jean holds on to a globe in the form of a beach ball. And there is a large portrait of Marilyn Monroe on the set not today, in all her glory. After some confusion, Marilyn now, Marilyn now forever known as Norma Jean, begins to understand where she is. And now I turn the stage over to these wonderful actors. When you call out my name, I'll about answer to one. Don't need possessions, I travel easier with none. Can't count my triumphs, there weren't too many didn't hurt the children because I never had any. When they try to find me, I won't be there. Not in any house. I don't live anywhere. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose the possession of that fair thou owest. Eleanor Aduza, perfection as ever. You know very well I am called chaperone. What do you want? Uh, sorry to disturb. I'm quite busy. Yes, I have been listening. Hmm? Do you have anything better to do with your time than eavesdrop? No one eavesdrops on an actor. It's merely an audience of one. How actors love an audience, even if it is just one. Besides, your occupation is asleep. You should be glad that at least someone is listening to you. If you must annoy an actor, why don't you go and entertain Her Majesty Miss Bernhardt? The Divine Sarah is not as kind as you. She throws rocks at me. She sh you should be nice to her. May I ask you for something? It's a trifle, really, but it would mean so much to me. May I finish reciting the sonnet? Oh, all right. But softly, do not wake my occupation. <clears throat> oh, get on <clears throat> with it, will you? But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest. Nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Thank you. <laughs> Was I misinformed, or is your charge also an actress? Jeez. Look at those clothes. A little skimpy to wear to eternity. You're jealous because you look like a queer undertaker. I am not jealous and I'm not queer. <clears throat> now, why are you wandering about here? Well, I want to be a player, an actor, an actor to be remembered in people's memory. I don't think people will remember me. I didn't live long enough to prove my talent. People have short memories. She is an exception. People will long remember her. Perhaps not for the best reasons. Is, was she a good actress? Wait, I know her. She looks very young, but yes, it's Marilyn Monroe. Please, she is called Norma Jean. 
She wanted to remain fresh, open to learning. She wanted to be as she was before the hideous transformation. I can understand that. We had the same bosses. They were brutal. I once lived on pills alone just to squeeze into that Zorro costume. Mr. Powell. Now please call me Ty, or at least Tyrone. Ty. She, like you, was spared the wrath of time and nature. Mm, the press said she was difficult to work with. It is a pity an actor must work for the press and the public. But without the public, where would we be? In an empty theater, I should imagine. Perhaps I can do a scene with her. We never did have the chance to work together. Impossible. Maybe I can help. This is as good a place as any to act. Besides, isn't it true that all the world's a stage? This is not the world. Please, Miss Dusen. Don't make me come down there. Be gone. I wanted approval. I wanted him to love me, to be proud of me, to know me, to see him standing out in a crowd and know he was the one to magically see through the movie screen, his face smiling, and all those years without him would vanish. I'd be his little girl. Now, well now I'll never. May I assist you, senor? Well, ma'am, I'm not sure where I'm supposed to be. I've been walking around. I can't seem to figure time. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to be. What brought you here, to my beach? I don't know. I haven't been doing much of anything in a kind of sleep, like I was waiting for something. You've been waiting and sleeping? Yes, ma'am, mostly. Uh, odd for me, being a working man. And do you... Do not you know why you came here? No, except that I was told to come here to see my daughter. Your daughter? Ma'am, <laughs> this is embarrassing for me. Because I don't know my daughter. Didn't know I had one. I, tell me, how did you learn you have a daughter? I wouldn't want to say something that would... Well, you being a lady... I promise you <laughs> I will not be offended. I was a working man on an assembly line. Times were hard, ma'am. I went to California to find work. You see, the crop failed. Yes, yes, the crop. I got a job on a line, machine parts. I sent most of the money home. Ma and my sister, Pa was gone. Yes, yes, Pa. This one day, and nothing like this ever happened to me, I was sitting by the ocean. It was the most beautiful sight. I took to eating my lunch right on the beach. Yes, lunch, <clears> the <throat> ocean. Uh, being here reminds me of it. Oh, yes. Uh, one day, this uh, real pretty woman came by. She had the reddest hair. Pretty. Real pretty. And you know what I thought was kind of funny? Did you talk to her? Uh, no, ma'am. Not at first. But she looked right at me and said hello. I was bowled over. You didn't just talk. Well, no. Uh, she said her name was Gladys. Uh, mm. I could tell things were going none too good for her, but... Even though she was dressed so fancy, she didn't fool me. What did you do? I offered her some money. Not much, mind you, just to help her out. She took the money? Yes, but, well, she told me she wouldn't be able to pay me back, but she would... Uh... I understand. <clears throat> I never did anything like that. I'm sorry, ma'am. <laughs> what is it, ma'am? From this thorn came that rose. Grown in honest dirt, at least. Excuse me, ma'am? Nothing. Nothing at all. Tell me, was it just one time? Oh, yes. I saw her another time walking on the beach, but she turned away when I looked at her. Yes, yes, but who told you that you have a daughter? Well, she did. Gladys. When? Oh, just now, just before I came to your beach. You mean Gladys is here? She's uh, somewhere around here. When I saw her, I went right over to her. I tried to talk to her, but all she said was, you have a daughter, go find her. Then she was gone, just like that. Is that all she said? Only that the girl should know the truth. I agree. Uh, tell me, senor, did you go to the movies? Oh, no, ma'am, I worked double shifts. Shifts, then there was the farm. Do you know her? Well, can't say that I do. Why? What about the girl there with the ball? No, I don't think so. 
when did you arrive, first arriver here? Well, now let me see. Uh, Mr. Franklin Roosevelt was just elected oh, president. Oh, meraviglioso. Uh, beg pardon? <laughs> it's wonderful. You don't know. <laughs> would you like to meet your daughter? I would, yes, but I uh, wouldn't know what to say. <laughs> Tell her about your family. Tell her about the, the crop, the farm. You'll find the words. Is that her? That pretty girl? Yes, that is your <gasps> daughter. Why, she's as pretty as a sunflower. <laughs> My mom would have had the prettiest granddaughter in Hastings County. Why don't you go and talk to oh, her? She looks happy just to be playing with the ball. Perhaps you can play with. <laughs> <clears throat> it's real nice here. I like the beach. Me too. I love it. I see you like to play with the ball. Oh, yes. I think it's a magical ball. <laughs> Do you want to hold it? See? Isn't it special? Well, I don't know. I suppose it's special to you because it's your ball. I can't seem to put it down. It sounds silly, but when I'm not holding on to it, I feel lost. I can understand that. We had a colt. I love that little horse, but came a time when we had to sell him. Oh, how awful. Now, that's what I thought, too. But Ma told me that nothing, man or beast, should be idle. I would have been happy to play with that little horse forever, but that wasn't right. He had his use. He got his chance to do an honest day's work. I learned something about growing up. Growing up? Yes. Ma said that a boy becomes a man when he stops thinking of only himself. Yes. I guess so. And I learned that it's okay to say goodbye. You know, when the time is right. Your Ma sounds like a smart lady. Oh. She taught you well. That she did. But I don't know if I learned too well. You gave up your colt, your precious horse. I don't think I could have done that. I adore horses, all animals, really. Well then, you would have liked our farm. Do you? Do you know me? That lady asked me the same thing. Do you recognize me? No, I don't know you. I'm sorry to say that this is the first time I ever saw you. Sorry? Why? Because I, well, I should know you. A man has the right to know these things. What things? Like I told the lady, I was told to come here to meet you. To meet me, especially. Yes. I have to tell you something. Now, mind you, this isn't easy, and I suppose it wasn't easy for Gladys. Gladys? My mother? You know my mother. She liked the beach, too. You went to the beach with my mother? Once. A long time ago. Who are you? <clears throat> I don't know you, but I feel like I do, like I should. I think you're supposed to know me, and I'm supposed to tell you. Tell me what? I'm your father. You're him? You, you don't look like... I mean, I had a picture in my mind. It, Chaperon, can this be true? It must be. Now, I understand. I suppose I'm not what you had in your mind. I never expected to find out I had such a pretty daughter. <laughs> I didn't want to spoil anything for you. Like I said, I was told to come here. I didn't know anything about you. If I did, I would have... Loved me? That would be natural, I suppose. Yes, a man loving his daughter, and one as, well, as special as you. Were you important, special? Well, I lived my life as best I could. I bore no ill to any man, worked hard. Hmm. That's important, don't you think? Yes, yes. And so, so simple. I think we're s just supposed to put one foot in front of the other and take it as it comes. You worked hard, didn't you? I did, yes. Sometimes dirty work, but I got used to it. Yeah, I did some dirty work too. I don't know what kind of work you did. If it was dirty, like you say, but you sure clean up nice. I do? Yes, you are just about the prettiest little girl. Like I told the lady there, you are as pretty as a sunflower. I'll bet you're real smart, too. I could have been smarter. Oh, no shame there. We all could do with more learning. I didn't expect you to... What I mean is I thought you'd be... My mother always made me believe that my father was a... I hope I didn't d disappoint you too much. I should get going. No, 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 please, don't go. I'm, I'm not saying this very well, but I'm glad. I'm so glad. You are my father. That makes me happy. <laughs> yes.
the prettiest girl in Hastings County. I don't want you to go. I can't let you go now. We just found each other. I won't be too far away. We grow up, and we stop thinking of ourselves, and we know when to say goodbye. You're a fast learner, <laughs> but we're not really saying goodbye. I wasn't there to give you anything to hold on to, like that ball there. And now all I've got to give you is what's in my mind. So I'll tell you. Yes? It's okay to grow up. You can still be my little girl. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, please. I'm Norma Jean. What should I call you? How about Papa? Papa. What, you again? Would you excuse me for a moment, Norma Jean? Play with your ball for a while, if you wish. I beg your pardon, but this is not my doing. I was sent here to help her. To help her? How? I was told that I was to do a scene with her. Are you sure you are not here to demonstrate your inferior acting skills? Thank you for the compliment, mm. I think. But no, I have a purpose here. And what would that be? I think I know her. I understand her. We were part of the same world. She was the world's sex goddess and... And she was an actress. Yes, but not a very good a one. A great one. Why do you defend her and dismiss me? She is my occupation. I must show her certain truths. With all due respect, and my respect for you is abundant, I don't think you can help her. I mean in the way that I can. The impertinence! No, Miss Dooza, I am not impertinent. I just believe that you have been going about this the wrong way. Wrong? I have been doing this for... Not very long, if I'm mistaken. I do understand her. I know how she has been manipulated. I understand her frustration. Do you? On stage, you were the greatest. You were revered. But I know more about this woman. I know what she went through to come out looking like a product. Why, I was spooned into clinging tights and asked to wave a sword around. No one cared if I could act. I was amusement for the ladies, and some men, I suppose, just as she was a carnival act for men. I thought you liked the tights. That's not the point <laughs> I'm trying to make here. Since when have costumes and makeup replaced the craft? Strip it all down to the barest form. That was your creed. Look at that picture. They bleached her hair, changed her nose, shrunk her dress, asked her to wiggle when she walked for what? to arouse lust in men and to evoke envy in women, it's all nonsense. You have returned here with such passion, I hardly recognize you. Have you been speaking with Miss Bernhardt? Not at all. I was <laughs> sent here by, by, I don't really know who sent me, but I, here I am now, without tights, to do a scene with her. I was told, I was not told of this, but very well. Come here, Norma Jean. Yes? I don't know why, but I know you. You don't look like him, but somehow I, I know who you are. Tyrone Power, <laughs> yes. Oh, how was your crossing? Quick. Oh, I'm glad. Do you know Ibsen? Why, yes, I do. Continue. Well then, well, what then? When I'd exposed my own wife to shame and disgrace? When that was done, I thought, <laughs> I thought I was completely certain that you would come forward and take all the blame, that you'd say, I'm the guilty one. Nora! No, of course I shouldn't. But who would have taken my word against yours? That was the miracle I hoped for and dreaded. It was to prevent that that I was ready to kill myself. Nora, I'd gladly work night and day for you and endure poverty and sorrow for your sake, but no man would sacrifice his honor for the one he loves. Thousands of women have. Brava! <laughs> Brava! I was good, wasn't I? Indeed, <laughs> as I have always known. <laughs> Pure is the white rose in the compost earth, growing eternal strength in the nights that so hurt. Be strong, little flower. Your heart will guide true. And as long as you want, I will always talk to you. I want to thank my talented friends for being here today and I really really look forward to working with them again and other and other great artists musicians it, it, it is wonderful um, I want to thank you and um, 
I, I would like to also to uh, check out Stramel, S-T-R-A-M-A-L.com, to learn more about my non nonprofit. And I also would like to remember, remember to take no notes that the notion of love is universal and all around us. Let your love light shine through and touch everyone you meet. So thank you. Till next time, ciao. I hear the castanets that call in. They have this dance for for more. And I don't care who, where we are. As long as I am there with you. Cause there's a place in the world for those who say I love you. And if we wish upon a star. Travel here and far. We could stay right here at home.